The four worst years to be born in. 2001. I have a lot of friends that were born in 2001, but y'all are absolutely crazy. Y'all get in so much trouble and are just super unlucky. Y'all need to be safe and stop doing stupid stuff. Comment what year you were born in. She asked me to take her daughter's V-card. I recently started talking to this girl at school. To be honest, she was kind of weird, but she was bad. So after a few weeks of talking and going out on dates in public, I finally got to go over to her house. When I got there, I was greeted by her mother. Her father was at work and wouldn't be back until dinner time. So after a while of hanging out with the girl and her mom, things got really weird. Her mom asked her to go upstairs to her room because she had to talk to me about something. I kind of expected her to give me the dad talk since he wasn't there at the time. But instead, she told me that her daughter was acting out and could use some, you know, peen. I was shocked, but I could not pass that opportunity up. So you already know, I went upstairs to bust some doonies down. And I did just that. But the crazy thing is, right before I finished, her dad got home. And he was completely unaware of the situation. So he walked in on me doing it with his daughter. And what he did was absolutely insane. But I'm out of time, so like and share for part two. You can watch it now by downloading the link in my bio. So my girlfriend was calling me a bunch of different names while we were doing it. Like I said, not actual human names, but like only names that you call somebody when you're in the act. Well, her calling me those names wasn't really getting me in the mood. Because those are names that you could call anyone while doing it, and I wanted her to call me something more special. So I asked her to say my actual name. And the name that came out of her mouth wasn't my name, it was her ex-boyfriend's name, Connor. And what she proceeded to do after made me kick her out of my house. The first thing she did was she didn't even realize that she said his name and not mine. She kept going and kept repeating his name over and over and over again. And when she finally realized what she was doing, she slipped up and told me that she was thinking of her ex while we were doing it. So I kicked her out of my house, and then her and her ex got back together, of course. I'm still salty about that shit. That story was from Reddit. If you want more crazy stories, then like and share this video. My girlfriend said her ex's name while we were doing it. So, I was over at my girlfriend's house on a Saturday like usual when we decided that we were gonna do it. For the first time, actually. So she got on top of me and started to, you know. While she was, you know, doing what she was doing, she was calling me a bunch of different names. You know, not human names, but things that you only call someone during the act. But her calling me those things wasn't really getting me in the mood, so I asked her to say my name. But instead of saying my name, she said Connor. And what she did after saying his name was even worse than the fact that she said his name in the first place. Like and share to find out what she did in part two. Download the link in my bio to watch part two right now. Y'all ever just chilling and your leg falls asleep and you literally can't move because you're in so much pain? So me and my friend broke back into the house to go find the dress. Since for some reason, the dress and the wig were both missing from the mannequin in the window. Once we got upstairs, we noticed that the mannequin was in the same exact position that we left it and the wig was on the floor. The dress was nowhere to be found, which confused us both because the mannequin hadn't been moved an inch. As me and my friend were discussing what the hell could have happened, we heard playful whistling coming from downstairs. The whistling sounded like some sort of Christmas tune, but I couldn't make out what it was. It sounded like something you would have heard hundreds of years ago. Me and my friend reluctantly decided to go back to the staircase and look down to the first floor. And that's when we saw a middle-aged girl walking down the hall. And worst of all, she was wearing the dress. Luckily, she was walking in the opposite direction so we could only see her back. I didn't know how scary her face could have been. Instantly, my friend ran back to the room with the mannequin in it and I followed. He literally jumped out of the second story window and so did I. And luckily, it was snowing and it broke our fall. But when I turned back to the house, what I saw on the window was so horrifying. Like, share, and follow for part three. So I pulled a prank inside of a haunted house and it went horribly wrong. I saw something that scared me for years. So there's this house in my town that was built in the 1700s and rumored to be haunted. And the house has been abandoned since the early 60s. Well I never believed in ghosts and neither did my friend so we decided to break into the house and pull a prank. My best friend has this really creepy old dress in his attic. Our idea was to go buy a mannequin and a wig and put the dress on the mannequin. Then we would go inside the house and put it up in the second story window. You can see that window from the main street and the woods. It's literally the perfect spot. So we got inside the house and put the mannequin up. It actually went really smoothly. We left and gave it a few weeks to see if anybody was talking about the ghost in the window. Because the original owner actually died in the house. And her name was Abigail. Well, after a few weeks went by, nobody was talking about it. So we went back to the house to check up on the mannequin. It was the middle of the night when we got there. And when we looked in the window, there was no wig wig or dress on the mannequin. So we went inside to look for it. Once we got up to the second floor, we found the wig, but no dress. That's when we heard playful whistling inside the house. Part two. 
Every day that I was showering, this red and brown goop kept getting all over me. But it wasn't coming from the actual shower, it was coming from cracks in the ceiling. Day by day, it was getting worse and worse until something fell on me that made me call the police. Human hair and a human fingernail that weren't mine. So before I decided to call the police, I decided to make a complaint to the apartment renters again, and yet they did nothing again. Even when I told them what was falling out of my ceiling. Horrible people. So once I called the police, they did an investigation of my apartment and checked the ceiling. What they told me they found was the most disgusting thing I'd ever heard in my life. You remember how I said I stopped seeing the man that stalked me? What I found out was that man broke into my house when I wasn't home, crawled up into my ceiling, and waited for me to get there and get in the shower. And apparently the man got stuck in the ceiling to where he couldn't get out. The police said that he had definitely been there for over a month, but ended up taking his life of starvation. But the reason his parts were literally falling on me is because the moisture from the shower melted him. That story was gross. I found a body in my ceiling. Back in my second year of college, I moved into an apartment off campus. Because I like my privacy, and my freshman year I had to stay in a dorm. So I was finally alone. But there were a few things about this apartment that really bothered me. First being was that I had a stalker. It was a tall bald guy in his 50s who stayed downstairs. Every single time I entered the apartment complex, he was waiting on me. And the creepiest thing about him was that his teeth were completely black, like rotten and nasty. Well, the second problem was my shower was always cold. The people who rented out the apartments never fixed it no matter how much I complained. After a few months of me living there, I stopped seeing the weird guy, so I just assumed that he moved out. But that wasn't the case. Just listen. My shower system got really disgusting. Every day that I'd shower, this red-brown goop would fall all over me. But not from the cold shower, from cracks in the ceiling. But just a few days after that, something fell on me that made me call the police. A human fingernail and human hair that wasn't my color. I can share for part two. I look like my bio to watch now. So my mom was being haunted and no one believed her, but now I do, so let me explain. So recently my mom has been acting strange, like talking to herself in front of everyone about really weird stuff. And the stuff that she talks about is really fucking scary, so I don't really feel comfortable saying it. One thing that she said was please don't hurt my family, but the other things that she said are way worse, and if you really want to know, I'll tell you in the next part, just let me know in the comments. Given that she was talking to herself, me and the rest of my family believe that she might be schizophrenic. So recently we had her checked into a mental hospital. But I've been going to see her every day and she's told me some really creepy things. She mentioned to me that when she was a kid, she was tormented by something every night. She said the thing went away when she turned 10, until recently. I've never believed in the paranormal, so I stopped seeing her for a few days. But I went back and I saw something that scared the living shit out of me. I literally saw a silhouette standing right behind her. But she's home now and things have gotten a lot scarier. I'm out of time, but like and follow and I'll tell you about it in part 2. This is the story of how I slept with one of my teachers. And I've never told anybody about it until now, besides the one other person who actually saw it happen. But back in high school, my math teacher was a gorgeous girl in her mid-twenties. She had long brown hair and beautiful hazel eyes. She wore glasses, so it was kind of hard to tell. Regardless, she was stunning. At my school, during lunch, they had tutor sessions. Everyone who went to the school went to lunch at the same time, unless you were being tutored, obviously. I had to go to tutoring a lot in math class because I was not good at it. I was good at every other subject, math just wasn't for me. Anyway, one day I was getting tutored and things went completely different from normal. First being was I was the only other person besides the teacher in the class. No one else had a tutor session that day. This was the first time that I was in there alone with her. Before she could teach me anything about math, she started crying. Of course I went to go give her some comfort. This is when she told me that her husband cheated on her. And after I told her I was sorry and she deserved better, she started kissing me. Eventually she stripped me and sat me down on her desk. Got on top of me and started writing. And this is when the lunch bell rang and another student came in the room. Many more would have called us if this kid didn't save us. Part two's this is the story of the first time that I saw a girl's butt. It literally couldn't have been any more awkward. One day after middle school, I was at home playing video games like I usually do. The girl that my dad was dating at the time was over hanging out with him. It was nearing 8 o'clock. Literally every single school night at 8 o'clock, my dad made me take a shower. And the reason that he had to make me is because back in middle school, I hated showers. I know it sounds gross, but I just wanted more time to play the video game. Anyway, at 8 o'clock, I got together my clothes, got my towel, and went to the bathroom. The strange thing is the bathroom door was locked. I knocked on the door and I didn't get a response, so I walked through the house to find my dad and his girlfriend. And they weren't in his room, or any other room in the house either. They hadn't ate yet, so I was under the assumption that they went to go pick up food or something. I went back to the bathroom to take a shower, and you know how I said the door was locked? Well, on this particular type of door, you could literally use your fingernail to unlock it. So that's what I did. I opened the door to see my dad's girlfriend drying off from a shower. She was completely naked and her butt was facing the door. I could have left, but she had such a fat ass that I could not stop looking. Don't judge me, I was 12. This is when I heard my dad open the front door. He simultaneously turned around, saw me, and screamed. And this is where things got so much worse. Like and share for part two. So this is the story of the first time that I saw boobs. And it couldn't be more embarrassing. 
So back when I was younger, I used to spend every single weekend over at my best friend's house. And me and his family were really close, so it was never a problem. Well, on that particular year, Halloween fell on a weekend. They decided to throw a Halloween party for adults. Well, some of my friend's siblings were allowed because they were teenagers, but my friend's parents made me and him stay upstairs because we were just now getting into middle school. So the Halloween party started, and me and my friend were pretty bored, so we decided to play some video games to cure our boredom. But after a while, the party got super loud, and we got really curious what was happening down there. So we decided to sneak downstairs to see what was going on. When we got downstairs, we noticed that the house was packed with people. There was barely any room to move. And this is when I noticed that I had used the bathroom. And there's only two bathrooms in the house. One in the living room, and one in his parents' room. The one in the living room is occupied. So I made my way to his parents' bedroom. And as I neared their bathroom, I heard very weird noises. And I knew what they were. But I was curious, so I went in the bathroom anyway. I walked in to see my best friend's mom getting railed by his dad. Part two is so embarrassing, so I can. So apparently, this filter can tell your future. Sounds like cat, but let's try it. In an unexpected way. Well, can't be that bad. Hmm. I wonder what this does. <laughs> so I slept with a foreign exchange student, and yes, my parents brought her in. That means that she stayed with us. Anyway, her name was Liv. Well, that wasn't her actual name, but that's what we called her. And she was bad. Like, I'm talking a 10 out of 10. All this happened about two weeks after she moved in with us. Leading up to the incident, she was giving me so much signs that she wanted it. And the reason that I caught the incident is because it didn't go well. Like, it literally couldn't have went any worse. Anyway, it was a Friday afternoon after school, and both of my parents were still at work. Meaning that me and Liv were home alone at the house. Because I don't have any siblings, I'm an only child. So I was just sitting in my room doing homework when Liv opened the door and came in. She asked me if I needed help with my homework. And of course I said yes, because it was math homework and I'm really bad at it. School's not really my thing. And this is where it gets juicy. So she came over to me, but instead of sitting beside me on the bed, she sat on my lap. So she started helping me with the problem, but I couldn't pay attention. Her face is so beautiful that I couldn't stop looking at it. And when she noticed me looking at her, she smiled and kissed me. One thing led to another and I got on top of her. And this is where things go so wrong. I can follow for part two. 